In the 2020s, there have been several instances of the Northern Lights being observed in the southern regions of North America. With the peak of Solar Cycle 25, more frequent geomagnetic storms are bombarding the planet. And with those storms comes a whole new disturbance, the substorm. During a geomagnetic storm, the magnetic fields between solar wind and the Earth link together, resulting in a massive buildup of energy. This energetic buildup is the factory where the Northern Lights are born. High-speed particles begin to collide with oxygen in the upper levels of the atmosphere, resulting in the green glow that auroras are known for. As the solar wind continues to grow in intensity, the lights get brighter and brighter. Our geomagnetic storm is growing stronger by the minute, and so are the forces acting on the Earth's magnetic field. As the effects of a geomagnetic storm grow stronger, the magnetosphere is stretched like a rubber band, forming a long tail shape. Back on the ground, the auroras are now exceptionally bright, but only manifest themselves as a green band without much structure. Occasional ripples in the curtain foreshadow the show waiting to begin. As the magnetosphere is stretched farther, something is going to have to give. When the two tails of the magnetosphere touch, they rapidly snap and release a huge amount of energy back towards Earth. Closer to Earth, the GO satellites have a close eye on our magnetosphere, using a special tool known as a magnetometer. As the graph sinks further, more energy is slowly building up. And when it finally shoots back upward, that means a rapid energy release has occurred. This is our substorm. Small substorms may only spark a show that lasts for a few minutes. Here we are again, shooting more auroras. They're not as bright as they've been, but you can still see that faint green glow. But stronger substorms can cause the auroras to light up for an hour or more. The auroras are overhead at this point. That's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. That's one of the craziest things I've ever seen. Auroras in just outside of downtown Milwaukee. Don't get a light show like that very often. By comparing ground level observations of strong substorms to observations of a G5 geomagnetic storm, we can see just how far south a substorm can push the auroras. Well, that's the Northern Lights, right above me. On May 10th, 2024, a G5 geomagnetic storm brought auroras to areas as far south as Venezuela. Dad, what do you think of this? Pretty cool. <laughs> Here we go. We're getting photos of a thunderstorm with the Northern Lights. This just shouldn't happen. For most of the night, the storm blanketed the mainland United States with overhead auroras. This evening was truly magical, but can a strong substorm provide similar results? On October 10th, 2024, a G4 geomagnetic storm was building up a bright show in the sky. Reports at this time showed a stable arc of the auroras centered over the Midwest, and reports of low horizon auroras were trickling in from points southward. At 9 p.m. Central Time, 
a large substorm shot a jolt of energy towards Earth. In just a few minutes, northern lights were being reported just off the Venezuelan coast. This is some of the reddest reds I've seen, easily. Safe to say, substorms are one of the best ways to experience the Northern Lights in areas well south of their usual location. Hopefully, now you're equipped to get out there and enjoy the second half of Solar Cycle 25, as we've got more Aurora opportunities coming soon.